it's already almost closed back up. Now last time I did it, my pick stuck when it got hot. So I was all prepared for this to stick, but this rod was evidently big enough and cool enough it didn't stick to that and, and just came out so easy without pulling any with it. And I definitely drug on the bottom this time, so we'll see. See what I got. Okay, you guys, this is almost done. But I want to show you a technique that I use when I have air bubbles. It's starting to get a little bit crusty back here, but there's lots of air bubbles here. So if you take metal picks that are cool, they're not hot, you can open these bubbles, bust the skin open on them, take that one clear off, and that'll let that come to the surface and the cavity inside there will fill up. There's a big air bubble right here, and if I open this up, there's a big cavity that was underneath that. Well now that can just level right up real easily. So I'll take the pan out when it's nearly done, it's usually around 50 minutes or so and I'll pick the bubbles like this. The loaf below it is so hot it's sometimes it'll level up without even going back in the oven. Now my picks are starting to stick so I flip them in for end because those tips were getting hot. When your uh, pick is sticking it's because it's getting hot. Got this out of the oven. It's been sitting here cooling for about <clears throat> excuse me five minutes and it's starting to skin over on the top and that's when I put the clamps to it. So you see I've got the uh, piece of plywood sitting underneath it. You can turn it, it turns from glossy shiny to a uh, matte finish when it gets cool like still a little bit hot right there. So when I gets firm around the edges so it won't come squishing up out. If you squeeze this too hard you'll bust the crust and uh, it'll start oozing out the side is what it'll do. So now I like I look around the pan and uh, level it up. You cannot squeeze the air bubbles out of it anymore. That's a... I mean, just think about it. The air bubbles that are in there are in there. The harder you squeeze this, you're just going to compress those air bubbles. Unless it's something's able to flow out, the air bubbles aren't going to go anywhere. They're just going to get compressed and get a little bit smaller. Uh, this clamp is on here to keep the sheet from warping and going crazy, which if you don't clamp it, it'll bow up on the corners and get thick and thin and be a terrible terrible mess. That thing is still hot as hell. It does start to ooze up. There's two things you can do. Obviously first you can loosen the clamp and let it cool a little bit and then put the pressure back on. And the other thing I'll do is I'll take the air compressor holes and I'll blow cool air on it to, to cool that and make it get stiff so it can't keep coming up out. So, last thing that I like to do is turn it over and leave it like that. Which serves absolutely no point whatsoever. It's just something I've always done. <laughs> so there you go. That's how to comb HDPE. Look like heck on the top and you might be thinking what is that guy thinking? That looks like hell. But tomorrow when we plane that off the beauty lies within. It's the next morning. Oh, it's looking very promising on the top. You can see now how it shrunk away from the pan. There's a gap all the way around it, but it's still it's nice and flat because we had it clamped in the boards. And my pans are getting kind of wore out. But still, drops right out. Very obvious there, you can see my comb trails. There's the first attempt, then the second time. And awesome, so I know I got clear to the bottom because I can obviously, I can see it right here on the sheet. 
so it, this is going to get planed off obviously and, and you know the bottom's still not flat there's a dip here there's a dip there and that's why this sheet was made thicker and here's the scorching that I talk about and I would never I never want that in a sling so I always cut that off I always trim the outside to get rid of because the scorching tends to happen around the edges worse so I don't want that in a sling so trim it off but all right this looks very promising I'm gonna go put it through the uh, joiner and the planer now and see what we got Yeah, this is just a little over seven eighths of an inch thick. So on the bottom side here, I got a, an air cavity still. Maybe one, one little guy, but other than that, this back underneath side is perfect. See, so that's what was hidden underneath all that goo. I mean, man, that's beautiful. Almost like I could just hang these things on the wall. <laughs> really intense. But you can see over here I got a lot of bubbles still. So looking back, I should have let it cook another 15 minutes and these these would have came out by themselves. I mean they would have come up to the top and I could have done the open thing. So I would I conclude that I rushed that a little bit at the end. I could have got a better result if I'd have just cooked it longer and let these rise. I could get a bubble free sling. And if that one is there. I think I can work around the bubbles like that right there and still get two slings out of it. 